You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and my guest today is someone who I've wanted to interview since I first discovered her site, Leslie Pyle, founder of HireMyMom.com. Welcome, and thanks for joining today. Thank you, Pete. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, I like I said, I, I, as soon as I saw your site, given the nature of what Zen Gig is all about and the Finding Careers End podcast, uh, it just it just spoke to me right away. Where you are, you've created something you know, with a specific audience in mind, a, 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 a very large audience, and one that I think probably has um, a lot of uh, a lot of benefit right now for employers uh, to mm -hmm. to to really connect with. So, if you wouldn't mind, Leslie, if you could just I could read your bio, but you're going to do much better uh, <laughs> describing yourself and and uh, and hire my mom than I can. So, if you wouldn't mind just giving that introduction, it'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Hire My Mom, as you probably guessed, is primarily for moms who are looking for remote work, but we also have women that are not moms. We even have a few men that join. So we are, we, do, we don't restrict anyone from signing up, but obviously our target market, because I was a mom wanting to find remote work many, many years ago. That's how it all began. And then for small businesses who are looking for talented professionals, but don't necessarily want full-time or on-site employees. So that's kind of become our niche um, for, you know, these businesses, they may only need somebody for, you know, five or 10 hours a week in the early stages, but they may build up to hire, you know, needing someone for 20, 30 or 40 hours a week. So it's a great way to on-ramp. Um, for a small business to, you know, put their feet in the water to, to get that first hire. And then we've had, you know, some businesses that have been with us for many years who've come back to hire their temp employee. So it's really um, satisfying to not only help these moms find work from home, but also to help these businesses grow. Neat. It's, I, I love it. But I, but, and I read your bio and the first thing that jumped out at me was, so Hire My Mom, you found it in 2007, but this isn't your first site of, of this nature. You found, yeah. you started a website in 1996, <laughs> which is crazy. I mean, when you, yeah. you know, someone who was um, in the workforce in 1996, most of our audience may not necessarily Maybe. be, but you, I mean, talk about a trailblazer. You really <laughs> early, How did that come to be? Yes. So my journey began when I was finishing my master's degree. As you can probably imagine, I had no aspirations to be a stay-at-home mom. I had visions of carrying that briefcase all the way up the corporate ladder. Um, my background and my, my degrees were in journalism, PR, marketing. So I wanted to work for a big corporation in their PR department and Got my first job after that. It was a small company, which was great to start at. It was actually a golf school in Austin, Texas. And I did their PR and marketing for their golf tour clinics around the country. And it was there that I got pregnant with my first child. And so I went to my employer's husband and wife team and said, you know, I'm pregnant, um, but I'm 100% coming back to work because, you know, again, I have these big career aspirations. So fast forward nine months, had my baby. When she was born, it was like something shifted in me. And I was all of a sudden like, what in the world am I doing? Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to go back to work. I don't know what's going on in my body and my heart right now, but I'm going back to work. So the six weeks ended, I went back to work and I cried every single day at my <laughs> desk. Like it was awful. And I never anticipated that that would be me. Um, so I went to my employer. This was 1995 and said, is there any opportunity that I could possibly work from home a couple of days a week and do some of that stuff and then come in the office maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday? And they were not open to that at all. You know, working from home was not a thing at all. And I kind of expected that answer, but I still wanted to give it a try. So when I got that no, I went back to my husband and I said, okay, well, obviously working 40 hours a week is not working for me. As much as I want it to, it's not. So what if I start trying to get freelance clients? And this again was pretty rare back then. You really didn't know people that worked from home or who did freelance. No, that, I mean, everything you're saying, I mean, it is even a few years ago would have mm -hmm. before and to some significant degree, right? So when we're talking right. mid nineties, unheard of. Right. And, is, and, you know, the internet was, I, I had heard of it, but I didn't, didn't even really know what the internet was. And I don't even think we had had home computer very long. So it was all very new, um, but he was willing to take a chance with me. So 
we cut every bill we could. We got rid of cable TV. We um, sold one of our cars. So we became a one car family because that car did not have a car payment. Um, we went back to eating ramen noodles because we put both put ourselves through college. So we were used to being poor. And so we just went back to as poor as we could live and still function. And I went out and started soliciting business. So, you know, I can write your newsletter. I can do press releases. I can do this and that. And I'm not a very good, I don't consider myself a good salesperson, but when I'm determined and motivated, like I was to be able to stay at home, I turned on a side of me that I didn't know I had. So I was able to slowly build up a business and making an extra four or 500 a month was minimum. That was just to pay our bills living poor. And so I was driven to make that four or 500. I mean, and we couldn't even go out for ice cream at that point. That was just to pay the bills. So um, it was a challenge. It was hard. It was stressful. All the while being a brand new mom. Yeah, there is um, that little thing. <laughs> yes. Right. And if I had to meet with the client, I never offered that I worked from home. I would just say, I can come to you and meet in your office. And it worked every time because it was convenient for them. So sometimes my husband would have to go with me and we'd go like during his lunch break, he'd stay in the car with the baby while I went to meet with the clients. I love it. So I love that's it. That's how it all began. And it was about maybe six months to a year of doing that, that I was like, okay, I cannot be the only mom doing this. Where are the rest of them? And so that's when I created my first website, which was called Home Based Working Moms or HBWM.com. And it became like a kind of like an online um, chamber of commerce to connect moms around the country for networking, support, ideas. Um, and I charged a monthly fee to be a part of that. So that's how I was able to monetize it. There was a wow. free version, but there was a paid version too. Incredible. I mean, I mean that, that there's so I could talk to you for hours about <laughs> that story. And I know that's not really why we're here. So maybe, maybe a later time yeah. because I'm just, I'm just um, since we just met today, um, I, and you mentioned um, you know, the struggle uh, that you had to go through to, to get started. It, it, I, I said to you before we started recording, with that exception, every interview I've done so far, that struggle comes up and mm -hmm. it, you know, to overcome. And I, I just want to highlight that for a second because it's really part of, I think, the path of finding what we call careers in on this podcast. And to me, mm -hmm. it means you know, satisfaction and happiness and accomplishment. And it's very personal and individual. It doesn't mean success that necessarily resonates with anyone else or is meets anyone else's definition. It's what it means to the individual. So mm -hmm. with all these very diverse stories, uh, that is such a common theme. And I've become almost just fascinated by it because- mm -hmm. It's almost as if, unless you have to overcome that, you really don't, you really don't appreciate what's on the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have to have a goal, and if the goal is simple, it's probably not very rewarding. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really glad you you shared that. And and so when you started the site in 1996, how did you how did you do it? Where did you begin? I mean, that because that was dial up days. That was, yeah, it was. AOL days. I mean, this that was. was. You're really? speaking my early bird, my early language. Yes. And you know, that was what was so nice about having a PR background. So I put my PR background to work and I sent out press releases to all of the local, regional and national parenting type publications that I could find. And within the first few months I got in baby magazine, which was a magazine. I don't know if it's around anymore, but when you went to the OB gym, that was a free magazine in their office. Okay. So that was golden for me at the time. That was, you know, instant national uh, media attention. Yeah, and I was yeah. very, because it was such a unique thing, I was very good at getting some great publicity. I had some TV interviews, radio interviews, and then, um, you know, exposure through print. So that PR background came in well and came in handy. Now getting PR like that is much harder because obviously there's a bazillion websites out there similar, not necessarily geared directly towards moms, but no longer am I, you know, super unique. And it's expensive to go hire for that, by the way. Yes. I mean, that is someone who's, um, you know, explored, explored that a little mm -hmm. bit. I can tell you it's, it does not come uh, cheap. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and even when you hire a PR firm, you're not guaranteed any results. I've been down that road too, because now I'm not really a PR person. I, my skills are way too rusty to go into that area. 25 years later. 
as have I. I've also gone down that road of of hiring and not mm-hmm. necessarily um, getting getting what I I hoped for out of it. But how how did you do the development of the site? I mean, how, where did did you did you solicit help for that? Did you do it on your own? Because that's that's its own animal to. to yes. So this was, you know, when internet was new and websites weren't nearly as um, complicated as they are now. So I did do my very first website on my own. It was with Microsoft front page. So I bought a, a program and had the the disk that you used to put in your computer. And I learned how to create a website. So that's where it began. Wow. Now I wouldn't have a clue because there's too many databases and interactions on the back end that it's way above my pay grade now to try to do a website. But early on, it was, you know, something that it was more of, I guess, a brochure site where you could add in the forums for, you know, back then it was forums that you interacted through and things like that. So. Oh man, if you could figure it out then, I think it would be a breeze today. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're, you're being too modest with that. Well, how did, how, now, so where did the the working uh, at home and how did you have that turn into, you know, uh, jobs and, and career oriented? Right. So, you know, I had home-based working moms and I had this great network. Um, I think at one time, we, like I said, we had a free membership and we had a paid. So combined, because everybody will do free things, I want to say it was close to 100,000 uh, people on my email list and in my community. So I knew that I had a huge base of women, you know, fast forward 10, 12 years later. Um, and as you know, our culture was starting to shift towards working from home. I was seeing little glimmers of maybe somebody would hire somebody to work from home. It was becoming a little bit more common. Uh, This was back in 2006. And I thought, what if I could help these women who I'm still passionate about working from home myself, because I had so benefited from the freedom and flexibility of being able to work when it was convenient for me and my children uh, when I wanted to go to, you know, a school play or a school lunch or whatever, I loved that freedom. And I knew that would be a lot more difficult if I was working a traditional job, which meant I knew it was all, also going to be difficult for all these women who were now a part of my community who really, a lot of them just wanted a job. They didn't want to start a business, right? which is really what you had to do back then. You had to start a business. You couldn't find a job. So that idea started brewing in my head. What if I could create Match.com, but for moms to find businesses to work for? Sure. And so I think that's about when Match.com and those types of websites were coming out. And so I thought it would be really great. I've got these women, but now I just need to find the businesses. So that's where the idea began brewing. And I first launched and did not charge businesses to post a job. So I used my PR background again and got the word out and said, come post your job for free and see how great these women are, hire them and all of that. So that's how I got that site off the ground because again, it was free for them. And then I had to charge something to this, the the mom job seekers, because I had to be able to pay for the expense of launching a a new business and all. So it was very inexpensive and I knew it wasn't going to be make me, you know, something that would make me millions, but I'm, it, it was a passion of my heart. And so I thought, you know, eventually maybe I'll be able to monetize better than I'm doing now, which now you do pay to post a job now that I have an established audience. So this is, um, I mean, it, I already said you were a trailblazer, but, but really, mm-hmm. I mean, in terms of the, you know, going after a work at home market that effectively didn't exist back mm-hmm. then, uh, but you saw a, a need for it and a value in it. Did you ever imagine then that, you know, fast forward to where we are now? I mean, and of course the fast forward really happened over the last couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. did you, did you, did you foresee that or, or are you surprised or, you know, could, did you look back and go, I, I knew, I knew this was going to be where we ended up. I knew the benefits of it and, you know, used to tell, you know, how much businesses could save by not having to pay for, you know, the office space, the equipment, um, you wouldn't have to pay for the commuting, the gas savings, the wardrobe. And I used to, you know, promote that as one of the reasons they should hire just the savings aspect for the business. And then, of course, if they can hire, if the role is one that works as a contractor versus an employee, you've got the additional savings there. So I knew it was a great uh, opportunity for both sides, um, but it was just a matter of people, I guess, trusting or believing that. And then obviously when COVID hit, It was like they had to try it. They had to, you know, most companies were forced to do some type of remote work opportunities. So I think it opened a lot of eyes and, you know, it doesn't work for every role or every company. Um, There are some that work better on site. um, But for the most part, there's a lot of things that can be done remotely. And I think it increases the 
um, the work life balance and the satisfaction. I feel like, you know, you're more, um, I think at, le at least with the people I've talked to, you feel more committed to a role where you have some flexibility versus one that's very rigid and requires you to be, you know, eight to five every day. At least I can speak for moms that, you know, appreciate that flexibility. You mentioned it earlier that you could go to, um, you know, an event at school without having to, well, you could just do it, right? And in, 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 in an office setting, which I you know, was in for a long time in the corporate world, and then up until COVID, our, our staff, my staffing business, we were all on site. Mm -hmm. And even as the owner of the business, I would feel guilty and, and mm -hmm. odd leaving in the middle of the day to go do something or, or feel like I had to justify it, which, right. which is crazy. I mean, it's illogical, but it, but it was a real feeling. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know if you remember or have seen the movie Father of the Bride with Steve Martin. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where he's in his factory, you know, he makes shoes and, mm -hmm. and, he, and his daughter was coming home. She had been away for, I think she'd been in Europe or something like that. Is is uh, and, and, he, and he leaves the office in the middle of the day. And, and that movie came out when I was working in the corporate world, I think probably in the mid nineties. And I remember, I have always had, I always had the thought that how that's the life I want. Like that was, that's one of my aspirations to be able to just be in a professional situation where mm -hmm. if my kid comes home from college, whatever it is, I can just leave. And at the time when I was in my twenties, that seems so foreign to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I, how am I going to get that kind of role where I could just do that without having to take time off, put in a request, you know, right. ask for permission. All of those things seem crazy. And now that we are virtual, I absolutely love it. And there's mm -hmm. no way we're going back. I'm so happy for my younger employees on the staffing in the staffing business who never have to feel that way. You right. know, they can do what they need to do. They can live their life. Now you still got to get your work done. You, you have to be responsible and accountable, mm -hmm. but just that mentality of not feeling, you know, like you're chained to a desk. Right. Um, it, it, it's just, it, it's just a, an entirely different feeling. I mean, it, it, do you, do you agree with that? Yes, 100%. So when I first started working from home, that freelance timeline, I thought, okay, well, my kids are in school, I'll go back to the corporate world. Because again, I had aspirations, I enjoyed working. Um, but no, once I got a taste of that freedom and flexibility, I was like, I can never give that up. It's just, you know, and I didn't mind if I had went to watch my kids school play, if I had to work that evening when they went to bed, that was great with me. I was like, happy to get it done or on the weekend occasionally, or whatever it took, just knowing that I could move things around to adjust to, you know, some priorities in my life at the moment, and didn't have to be, like you said, chained to a desk from eight to five. I think there's a lot of value in that. It's huge. Um, do you, um, you know, how has COVID changed, you know, changed your business? How has it changed for higher my mom? I think it has to, you know, it, it's probably a, a your audience had to have grown, I would right. guess, right? You would think it would have grown, but honestly, it there was a little uptick, but I think because so many of my uh, audience were already working remotely, it didn't, there wasn't a huge change. Now, the, the larger companies that started working remotely, I don't think they know about Hire My Mom because I don't have that big PR budget to go after the big companies that are remote. Uh, employees and such. I'm guessing a lot of those are on Indeed instead. So I haven't figured out if that's even something I want to tackle or if I just stay in my lane and keep it with the entrepreneurs, small business owners, you know, and that sort of thing. Well, the big businesses would be, you know, so with our staffing clients, we have about an equal split of SMBs and then enterprise uh -huh. clients. And the bigger the company, the harder it is to to turn their ship, so to speak. And they mm -hmm. have giant real estate commitments that um, those are, that's, that's hard. I, I know Elon Musk made a, a comment when, you know, in, in his, um, you know, in terms of buying Twitter about the, he had this giant building that no one's in. Right. And you look at that on paper and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you look at what it does for the employees and you think, gosh, you know, you, you have to conform. I mean, it's a, bigger, the bigger the company, my experience is the harder they are to change and to conform. Mm -hmm. And this is new. This is weird for, for companies who've done something the same way for a long, long time, where the smaller the organization, it's easier to pivot. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they're going to have to come around specifically because you're going to, they're going to have a difficult time competing for new employees. 
uh, mm -hmm. or or new hires where it being in staffing, I can tell you there a very, very large percentage of our candidate pool won't consider going on site anymore because they know the option exists and not have to where pre COVID, I would say it was a, it was a very out of the ordinary where we'd have mm -hmm. a remote job, a, a virtual right. job. That was by far the exception to the rule. Now right. I would say it's kind of the norm, which is yeah. great. Yes, I agree. And, and we're exclusively, you know, remote jobs. Every now and then we'll get a hybrid position, but if it's 100% on site, we don't even bother. We say, you, we're not the right platform. You won't find candidates here. <laughs> so so talk a little bit about, I want to understand a little better the platform itself. So um, when, when employers go on, you, you, have, mm -hmm. you have two sides and I'm familiar with job boards, of course, but not everyone listening, you know, mm -hmm. will be. So from that perspective, if you wouldn't mind just highlighting how the um, the individual uh, you know uses a site, what they can expect from the you know, job seeker as well as from the em employer, because those are really separate perspectives on on the benefits yes. they get from the site. They are, and I get asked that you know what makes us different even from like Upwork or um, Fiverr, some of those that are more freelancing jobs. And what I understand about those, those are again big, huge, mega job sites. We're more a smaller niche site. So number one, uh, well, as you come in, you would uh, you would choose from three packages. We have a monthly, uh, two months or three month packages that you can select and you can apply for as many jobs as you'd like with those packages. But how we differentiate ourselves is once you join, you don't pay a commission to us. So if you get a job and you make $5,000 a month, I understand a lot of job sites will take 10% or whatever their percentage is every month. Yes. So you're paying ongoing. Yep. So with Hire My Mom, you just pay your $30 up front and you're done paying us. So we're more just, um, you know, upfront free. And that works well for both of our audiences, we've learned, because it, you only get serious job seekers who are willing to spend $20 or $30. And the businesses aren't getting inundated with thousands of resumes. So a small business owner, they're probably not, they probably don't have an HR department. So they're hiring you know, their social media manager or their data analyst or whatever it is. So for them to go through 40 resumes, it's much easier than, you know, getting a thousand resumes. So that's one of the, the reasons that some of these businesses really like hiring my mom. And then on the flip side for businesses coming in, they also have, well, more than three packages, but primarily three packages. They can post their job for a month. Um, they can use our concierge service. So that's for a business that wants to hire, but either doesn't like the process or doesn't um, have the time. So they can hire, hire my mom, our HR um, specialist, to basically go through the process for them, post their job, review resumes, interview candidates, and then present the top two or three candidates to the client. And then they can decide who they want to hire. So you're so a little bit. Sorry, but you have a staffing company uh, or a staffing component built in, which is which is also very unique. I mean, you're you're right. doing things, and I want to ask about the other one in a minute that's that sets you apart from any other staffing or I'm sorry, job board that I'm familiar with. Right. Um, so you are offering the recruiting service um, mm -hmm. as, as an extra value to to the to the buyer to the client right. side. Right. We call it, you know, our white glove service or done for you service. And that came about only a couple of years ago because I had business owners. Once I had like my third business owner say, I need to hire, but I don't have time. Can you pick someone for me? And as the business owner, I was like, are you kidding? Do you think I have time to find someone for you? And when I, like I said about the third person who asked, I thought, huh, I don't have time, but what if I had an HR person that could do that? So I have two HR specialists and that's what they do exclusively is when we get one of these projects, they take it from start to finish for the client. So it's a huge time saver for the business owner. And it's, you know, one more service that differentiates us and, and helps us to establish that relationship that you're not going to get on a mega job site, you know, because oh, they can actually so call it. Yeah. You can call and actually talk to someone with us and our phone number is not hidden on, you know, 50 pages deep and to the website. You're you're really um, doing something that's beneficial, and I I have never thought it's crazy. I've owned a staffing business for almost eighteen years, and I've never thought of what you just said and the way it you you you're doing it, which is to have uh, the job seeker pay uh, and mm -hmm. and 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 the 
a lot of sites will say, well, of course, we're not going to make the job seeker pay. But you just um, mentioned something that is so relevant that it it separates you know fake resumes and bad resumes mm-hmm. from from genuine quality mm-hmm. job seekers. And that is the problem, I would say, with job boards is when you mm-hmm. post an ad. Um, it, it's a, it's, it's, again, I'm a business that indeed gets a lot of our money uh, mm-hmm. each year. Uh, right. You know, Monster, Career Builder, LinkedIn, all of these over the years have have been our biggest expenditures as a staffing company, mm-hmm. and we hate posting job ads because it is mm-hmm. uh, yeah the there's a lot of garbage. I, I, I should come up with I, I should use a better word, but that is right. the one that is in my head, and. It's also why staffing companies exist in large part because you know, it's really, really hard to to do that. But you're solving two problems in one. You're you're mm-hmm. you're you're basically eliminating any bad candidate or fake candidates, I should say, right? You're, right? you're just starting with quality because, and that's a you're you're doing it for a very reasonable price, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you're not you're not breaking anyone's bank by doing right. that, but you're putting your you're in a separate um, category than than most job seekers, and then on mm-hmm. the employer side. You're taking it a whole other step further than than any job board that I'm familiar with does by saying, "Hey, we'll we'll do that screening." And you know how time intensive it is. I certainly know how it time intensive because I'll tell you that is that is effectively what our staffing company does. We start with a very large candidate pool and end up screening out all the candidates who aren't qualified in order to get to those you know one or two who are. And so the value of that's immense. So I mean, you're you're doing something that's it's really putting together Different. the sides of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's big, it's big. What, what, um, and like I said, originally the reason I charged job seekers is because that's the only way I could monetize what I was doing. And I had that established audience. So I don't know if my business model is the right business model for everyone, but it worked for what I was doing and where I was starting from. Well, it's so smart. And I'll just tell you for, for, you know, our audience who who may be skeptical of that as, as a job seeker, um, mm-hmm. what you're doing and what you're offering by that, it really does me when you when you when you put a job posting out on a big job board, as, again, as we've done and still continue to do um, mm-hmm. today, you if you get 200 resumes, th- those are it's a lot of time to look through those. And, mm-hmm. and, and given that all it takes is is a single click to apply, Mm-hmm. It's easy to understand why candidates would, um, you know, uh, there, there's really no barrier. There's really, you know, no cost of entry, quite literally, to to put your resume on there and then to apply to a gazillion jobs and not think twice about it. Mm-hmm. But you're, you know, forcing everyone to be a lot more discerning and not forcing in a bad way. You're creating an environment where everyone's more discerning. Right. And so the quality level inherently is going to be significantly higher. And that's really really innovative of you. I mean, I know you're saying you, you didn't start, it, you didn't start off for that reason, but you're here mm-hmm. and that's how you're doing it. And Leslie, I, I have to say, that's, that's brilliant, really. And I will say, you know, that's why I think our, our number one source of new business is word of mouth, because these moms are thrilled that they're not competing with hundreds and thousands of people and are getting hired for the most part, you know, the ones that have a quality resume. And then the businesses are so relieved that they're not going through hundreds and thousands of resumes, but they're getting quality, real people that are applying. And you have to, you can't just push a button and apply. You have to, there are probably four or five things you have to to fill out. So it's a few more steps, but it's not tedious by any means, but it's not as easy as one button click and send. And a lot of times I think they don't, people don't even read the job description. They're just out there, click, click, click. Okay, I applied for fifty jobs today. Yes, no, uh, I I know that to be definitively true, mm-hmm. and it it really degrades you know, quality just just by, by the and it's frustrating. Of yeah, frustrating for the job seeker who thinks they applied for fifty jobs. Frustrating for the person having to read through a resume that has zero relation to the job they applied for. A hundred percent. What, uh, tell me about the freelance market a little bit. So that's, uh, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. Again, I'm, as a staffing, I just did a podcast about this last week. As a staffing company owner, it's a little strange for me to talk about how much I like the freelance market because in many respects that cuts us out of the loop. Well, mm-hmm. um, there's, there's always going to be a need for the type of service we provide. I'm not worried about that. But in, you know, I have to also be transparent. I'm a big consumer of freelance um, 
talent. I think mm -hmm. it makes the employee employer relationship so much healthier. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just, I, I'm, I could go on for days. This isn't my, this is about you, not me, but I'm a huge fan. So what, what, um, uh, what do you, what do you like about freelance, you know, versus traditional employment? Yeah. So on Hire My Mom, we get, I would say, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'd say they're freelance jobs, but definitely contract work, yep. 1099 contract work, I would say is our biggest pool of jobs. We do get some employee W-2 remote jobs as well. And occasionally what I call freelance, I would say is more project-based. Like I need a freelancer to create a logo for me or create a website, sure. yep. but it might not be an ongoing job. Okay. I'd say the, the bulk of the jobs that are posted on Hire My Mom would be like a virtual assistant that is going to work for you for 20 hours a week from now till it doesn't work out anymore. Okay. That's, that's the most common type of job that we get on Hire My Mom. Got it. And so, but I guess by virtue of those roles not being W-2, I would consider them to be, I mean, T-99 freelance, I use those generally interchangeably. I, I guess you mm -hmm. could you could argue that a freelance job is more temporary in nature, but the relationships <laughs> that I have with, with folks that I consider to be freelancers, uh, I intend for those to be indefinite where mm -hmm. um, as long as, you know, they like me and the, and the work is there and, and the quality is there and I like them, we're going to continue the relationship. And I think what I find so appealing about it is, you know, the government doesn't get in the middle of it, right? right. For lack of a better way to put it, right. it, is, it is truly the healthy part without all the bad of, of, of working together where, it's a mm -hmm. conscious decision every day. And um, as long as we both like it, we continue. And and you're setting the stage for that with, with your site. Right. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, there's not a lot of paperwork or anything to, to go through. No. And I was talking about this on the podcast last week. I was with um, uh, my HR consultant who, who I hired. He used to be a direct employee of my staffing company. And now he's a consultant. He wanted to be on his own in that world. And it was a, a, a match made in heaven for both of us. So we still work mm -hmm. together, but he's not my employee anymore. And, and, um, and nothing's changed uh, in, in how we work, but he's able to have more freedom and I'm only paying him for the work that he's doing for me while he's doing it for me. And right. it's so clean and it's great. So um, you know, for, for anyone who's unfamiliar with that way of working, um, you know, it's just, just know that uh, it's not scary. It doesn't need to be. It can be very, right. very, very attractive. Yes, I agree 100%. And it's a great way to get your foot in the door because a company is more willing to hire someone freelance or contract to test them out. And then maybe it could turn into a remote employment opportunity. Yes. What do, what do you hear most as far as hesitancy with, with remote today? I mean, I'm sure that again, that's probably subsided, but what, um, what are the, hurdles that you see businesses have to overcome in order to feel comfortable uh, with having a remote employee? I think it's just actually giving it a try. And like we talked about the whole COVID thing forced companies, large and, and small to give, you know, freelance remote work an opportunity. And I think it's just letting go of that control and, and just saying, let me test it out. Let me hire a virtual assistant or social media manager for a month. And if it doesn't work out, all you've lost is the hours that you pay that person. So I really encourage anyone that's like still hasn't tried it, still isn't sure whether it's, you know, a contract gig or, you know, something that would turn into an employment gig to just give it a try, but also have, you know, defined um, work scope of work that you want the person to do. And if it needs to, let's say you need somebody available from nine to 12 in your time zone for whatever reason, just make that clear because that sometimes is a valid, you know, thing if you need to meet during a certain time and you have to then switch gears to do more focused um, computer work that you can do anytime. But I think when someone's hiring for the first time, I think it's just really good to be as clear as you can in the job description on what you're looking for, the qualities that are important to you. If you have pet peeves, you don't necessarily have to call them pet peeves, but if you have them, somehow work that in there too, because you don't want those people applying if you know you don't like certain, you know, personalities or whatever it is. I know there's HR rules and laws that you have to follow as well. But I think those are, when I see someone submit a job description and it's just, I need a virtual assistant to help me. I'm like, oh goodness, that's not what you want to put out there for your job description. You need to, you know, but then on the flip side, you have someone who writes three pages of um, description and then people are glassy eyed and are too afraid to read all of it. So 
I think there's a fine balance in the middle. You can keep it to one page, but you can be thorough so people know exactly what you need and what your expectations are. Yeah, job descriptions are um, are an art. <laughs> at times. And, and yes. just like resumes, you know, they, um, it, many people don't, do, many organizations don't get them right. Many resumes are hard to, to write because we're not used to, to doing those, right? We know what the job is and what we need um, done. Um, and so we, we actually, one of the things that, right, when we were connecting, we just happened to be posting uh, uh, on Zengig um, a resume uh, template for for moms who are returning to the workforce. And and I thought, oh, that what, what perfect timing for us to connect. Um, so with that in mind, what what advice would you give to moms uh, to present themselves since you you get to see this you know, firsthand and in, in your um, you know, the buyer side? I need a better way to phrase it, but that's how I think of it, right? Right. The, the client side, um, who haven't worked for a while, mm -hmm. and are you know how, how do you re how, what recommendation do you give to people as far as presenting that and sharing that on their on their resume? Right. First of all, it's kind of a timely question because we just had one of our concierge projects. Um, the person who they hired just happens to be my across the street neighbor who has stayed at home for 17 years. Wow. And she's now an empty nester. Her youngest just went to college and I didn't even know she had signed up. She didn't tell me she signed up for hiring my mom, but I saw her name in the candidate pool of this project. Um, but long story short, I asked our HR specialist, I go, that is terrific. She just signed up like a week ago and she's already got a job offer and she hasn't worked in 17 years. I said, I need to know all her secrets because I'm continually learning from sure. all of this too. Yeah, I know what I would have said, you know, two weeks ago, but what is Mindy's story? Her name's Mindy. And so Vanessa, the HR person said, well, and I looked at her resumes, she had put all of the volunteer work and put it in, you know, little categories and very confidently wrote what she was good at and how she managed this and what she accomplished with this and all of these different volunteer opportunities. And some, I think she had one part-time gig um, with a photographer. So that was number one, but what really sold her was her confidence in the interview. She didn't come across as this little poor homely mom that hadn't worked in 17 years. She was well-spoken. She was confident. And she was like, this is what I've done. And this is what I can do for that client. So right. those are my two biggest tips, you know, just having watched this happen, you know, this week with one of our candidates. That's great. I love it. it it's, I think, um, especially now, people need to not be fearful of that gap or, you know, having to explain or justify. And, and I know I get asked all the time, it's not our core business to, 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 to um, ever work on part-time jobs as an example, but mm -hmm. the demand for that is so high um, right now. How, do you, and what, you know, how do you, how do, how are you found for that? Other than, you know, knowing your site and we'll do what we can, of course, to, to share that and make sure that uh, it's in our, in our show notes and, and, you know, front and center with the, the podcast itself, but how, 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 you know, you need to be found right. Uh, in order for someone to use your, your service on either side. So how, mm -hmm. how do you, how does that happen today? For hiring my mom to yeah. be found? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So our biggest, um, like I said, is word of mouth referrals. We still get a ton of referrals, both on the job seeker side and the business side from, from happy customers. Um, then we also do Facebook ads and Google ads, but a much smaller budget than, you know, big boys out there. Um, and then, you know, I do as many outreach opportunities as I can with marketing and PR. I love doing podcasts like this. And uh, I do write also for Entrepreneur, which is a great audience for us on the business side. So I'm always looking for how I can still use my PR background without really being a PR person these days. Wonderful. And and so we can um, know this definitively. Your, your tar if you had to describe your target client, who, how, how would you describe them? I know, you know, we, we're, we're thinking it's not enterprise, but who, who is it and what, what are their needs and what type of positions in particular do you, do you consider your, your, um, you know, your yeah. specialty? We get, you know, the, the small businesses of 10 employees of le or less, typically entrepreneurs, startup businesses, coaches, real estate agents. So all of those that are, you know, very kind of niche, that's a primary on the business side. And then obviously on the mom side, we've got, you know, 
you could go on and on just in the mom world. But like I said, we do have dog moms and grandmoms and empty nesters and dads and singles. Um, but primarily, I would, if I had to say, I would say probably 95% are actually moms. But again, anyone's welcome to join. Well, you just, you just said something that resonated with me. I have a friend who's a real estate broker who just sent me a text two days ago that said, hey, I really need to hire someone as an assistant. Um, what, what's your recommendation? And I recommend that don't try to do it yourself. That was my first thing. <laughs> but I'm going to send them your way today. For, oh, perfect. For, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's another good example of, you know, they need help, whether it's um, the admin side of it or it's the social media side, you know, those types of things where they only may need 10 hours a week. So they're not looking for lots of hours, but that mom that maybe she is looking for 30 hours a week, she can work for the real estate guy for 10 hours a week, and she can work for the coach for 15 hours a week and build her hours that way. So again, it's, you know, it's kind of like a self-serve. You come in and you find as many or as few clients as you need to get to where you want. So it's not, you don't just have to have one job or client. And that's where, again, I think the, the you know, that sounds like freelancing to me, which I, I love, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you you don't have to be restricted. And, it, and right. just like my HR consultant, who I mentioned, he works with different clients, but when he's with me, he's with me and our time mm -hmm. is very well spent and there's no fluff in between. It's all time that's very valuable um, you know, to me and, and quality. Yeah. And another benefit for the business owner I found is, let's say you do have that freelancer that works for two or three other people. They learn things from their other jobs, if you want to call it that, that they can bring to you and say, you know, um, like, this is what we do uh, at, with this client. Uh, we use Asana for that. Might want to try that. Or, you know, we've used this platform for this or that. So there's, you know, they can learn things that actually enhance your business. Sure. And, and no doubt. And what you're filling is a void. I consider it a big void. Just as I mentioned a minute ago, I get asked over the years so often about part-time and we just mm -hmm. turn it away with no real solution. I mean, we're like, right. I don't know, we don't do part-time. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense in our model. And you're filling that. And that, I know the demand is massive. Um, mm -hmm. So that, you know, for everyone listening, you, you, you have your solution now, and I will be mm -hmm. sure, you know, to <laughs> out that to anyone, anyone we can, because I just know how common it is. And I don't know what happens after we turn people away. Mm -hmm. that or business right. that way. Um, but but now we we have a great referral to give them so that's wonderful yeah, yeah um, absolutely well cool well Le leslie this has been great i have one more question i ask everyone um yeah. i have to know have you found your careers in 100 percent. i won't say that i've loved every day of the past 25 years we all have our hard days and we have our peaks and valleys where you're thinking man these people are driving me crazy or but on the flip side, you have those heartfelt moments where you've really impacted someone's life and those, you know, you cherish, but I really do enjoy what I do. I love as a small business owner, helping small businesses, but as a mom, I'm still passionate about having that freedom and flexibility, even though three of our four children are now young adults living out on their own. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your success. Um, Really just love hearing about your innovation and, and everything that you've done. And as I've said a few times, and I'll say one more, you are really filling a void that um, that that is necessary and important. And um, so congratulations on all of that. And thank you for, thank for joining you. me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pete. It's been a lot of fun. So hiremymom.com. Leslie, the link to Leslie's site will certainly be in the show notes. So please find her and uh, you know, we'll, we'll check back and uh, hopefully I'll have you come on a year from now and we'll see how things have changed. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Everyone Bye -bye. listening, have a great day.